made sense to continue with the king of Israel this summer. And last week we heard that God does not judge by the outer layer, the outer shell, but by the contents of the person's heart. And that is why David was chosen over all of his older brothers to be king. And we pick up today with all of his older brothers in the army of Israel. Israel is at war with the Philistines, and the Philistines have occupied one hill in an area, and the Israelites have occupied another hill, and there's a great big valley between them, and the Philistines have a super weapon. Not a nuclear weapon, not a biological weapon, but a weapon of terror nonetheless, in the presence of a giant Goliath. And the story goes that Goliath was nine feet tall. Very likely he was more like a foot and a half taller than everybody else. But, you know, imagine that the person that you are most afraid of is a foot and a half taller than you are. You know, he doesn't have to be very big to be very frightening, right? You know, it's kind of why sometimes little kids run from people who are super tall. So here's Goliath, and not only is Goliath the very, very tall man, but he's decked out in armor. And the Bible says that he wears 125 pounds of armor. Okay, so now imagine that this is a very tall man to carry 125 pounds of armor on him. How big does he have to be this way? Thank you. 
prophecy and duality. So David thinks he knows how to solve. And Saul says, <laughs> here's boy. What in God's green earth do you think you're going to do against that guy? Well, I'm a shepherd, and I keep the flock safe with my slingshot. And Saul says, well, no. you're dumb enough to do this. That's not what the Bible says, but I'm sure that's what Saul was thinking. Because, you know, recently started this Bible
Yahweh's role as Christian to make food camp is unnecessary. But until such time as they are not necessary, it is good and worth the pay to help provide food for those who cannot afford All people should have access to good, scientifically appropriate health care. And that includes mental health. How do we work on that particular issue at a time when funding is a hard thing to come by? When there are places in this country where women are not already not receiving good health how do we work on that when our mental health care system is not large enough to handle the crises that are happening? What can we do in our small corner of the world to make a difference there? We talk at length about the possibility of providing space for mental health care workers so that they can make affordable treatment possible. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, but it's one way that we can talk to them. We've also talked about the possibility of doing a wise congregation. That wise congregation program is very much like open and affirming in that it helps us to understand and be open to the stories of people who suffer from mental illness, whether it's depression or a disorder like ADHD or something more serious like schizophrenia. That program is for the whole congregation to learn. So that when we have folks in the congregation who share their stories, we can understand and not be judgmental. We're not automatically dismiss their stories as, oh, that's unfortunate. But realize that each and every one of us has the potential to suffer from mental illness. We are already an open and affirming church, and that right there is a key witness to the world. That we believe that all people are created in the image of God and worthy of love. And that we are not demanding that people change who they are or who they love in order to be loved in God's realm. Things that we do, the things that we invest in, both as individuals and as a church, to be oriented toward the kingdom world, toward making the world a more equitable place for all people. We speak the words of the Lord's Prayer on earth as it is in heaven. And each day our call is to make the earth a little bit more like heaven. And as we go through our daily lives, there are things we can each do. There are things that we can do as a church. There are things that we can do in concert with other churches and other organizations in our community to make the world a better place so that Dominic's generation doesn't have to work quite as hard to make it a new better place. So that at some point, the generations are able to sit under their own fig trees with a nut and a little share. The time is now for heroes big and small. Because the tasks in front of us are very large. But with God's help and with understanding of what it makes, what makes God's realm so wonderful. We can work day by day to make this world a little bit more perfect, a little bit more like the realm of God. If you watch the service, the video reflection for July 3rd, one of the things that I said was that the question for us as Americans is not, are we a Christian country? The question we should always be asking ourselves is, are we a country fit for the realm of God? And if we are going to be a country fit for the realm of God, then we have no reason not to do the work, no reason not
not to make the changes that we need to make in our own lives, the things we need to take up with the church, the things we need to keep doing as a church, and the things that we need to build partnerships across the town and the county and the state, and yes, even the nation, to make it more like the realm of God. May we all give up to the best promises that we spoke to. May we live up to the ideal that we will constantly be fighting people of injustice, people of inequality, people of some having more than enough, so much more than enough, that not only are there people without enough, but there are people in abject poverty. May we find a way to help each and every person that when everyone has enough, we are all better off, whatever that enough is. And may we all also have the wherewithal to figure out how someday the summers in New England will be what they were 50 years ago when air conditioning wasn't needed more than a three or four days a week. gather in the community in prayer. We are grateful to have Ted and Betsy with us this morning. It's kind of a second go round in person of being able to say goodbye and bless them as Ted continues on his journey into retirement. We're grateful to have Cassie and Paul with us this morning. Yes, Dominic, oh goodness. Oh goodness, you don't know where to laugh or cry now. <laughs> grateful to have all the family members who have come to join us for this moment. And in a way, it is also a way of blessing Paul and Cassie um, for their new life in New Hampshire. And we pray that you will find a congregation there that supports you and gives you the kind of love that you have to see growing up here. And uh, you'll feel like you can come back to the middle of the we're also thankful for the community gathered with prayers to support the Paulus family and they continue to prepare for a memorial service with that mother Claire and as they plan their travel back to Iowa in the coming days for that memorial service. Are there other prayer concerns? We know we have some folks who are Still recovering from COVID, so we're going to be praying for them. Folks who are in isolation or quarantine from COVID, so we're going to be praying for them. And we have folks who are traveling this morning, we want to pray for safe travel for them, as well as for those who will be traveling in the coming weeks for the day or so. We pray that they return to us. Now I have a question for kids. Has the summer vacation? I kind of got a little bit. Is that because you're tired or because it's only been 10? Yeah. Oh, it's coming. Okay. 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 That's right. Okay. That's right. We're 
as we watch the battle in Ukraine and we are aware that so many people are suffering. We are aware of so many people standing up against the kind of national oppression and evil that would come their way. And not just in Ukraine, but in many other places in the world where people are seeking to live lives as they would choose and not as others would impose upon them. We see the same divisions happening here in our country and we ask that you help us to do our part in healing the divide. Help us to listen to understand, and though we may not agree, to bring down the temperature of the discussion. So that it may not be so heated and so frightening sometimes. We ask your blessing upon all who are recovering from illness and from surgery. May their recovery be steady and strong, may they be brought back to us in good health. We ask for courage and patience for those who are awaiting test results or awaiting treatment. May they have your continuing presence with them. And may they know your love for them throughout each step. And today, Lord, we offer ourselves up to you. You have called us to be servants, and you have gifted each and every one of us with our own unique talents. Help us to use them wisely and well for the building of your May we go forth from here renewed and strengthened for witness and loving the world as we find it and as you have called us to make it. We say this fervently in the words of Jesus who taught us to pray, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 677, Child of Blessing. Will you please rise?